like to call the April 27, 2011 Planning Board meeting to order. Um, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the prior meeting. Anyone have a motion on that? Make a motion. The minutes of the March 17, 2011 meeting be accepted as written. Do I have a second? All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstain. All right. One abstention and five in favor. Six of us here tonight. We have two items of new business on the agenda, and since we have a somewhat new procedure, I thought I would explain it again before we get started. At the end of last year, we added a public comment period to our planning board proceedings. This is in addition to the public hearing which is a part of our ordinance requirements in connection with certain applications. What this public comment period means that at any time when the planning board has an item on the agenda, we will provide an opportunity to the public to speak. This is intended to encourage more, not less, public participation. So in any case, when we would otherwise have had a public hearing, we will still have a public hearing. So for anyone who's not here tonight who doesn't want to miss having an opportunity to give us input on items on our agenda tonight, um, to the extent required by statute, we will certainly have a public hearing. and. Um, if it's a discretionary item, then we will make that decision based on questions that the planning board may have or input that we have received from the public. And of course, the public is always welcome and encouraged to give us input in writing directed to Maureen O'Meara, who will then share it with the rest of us. In terms of procedure, we run the public comment period in the same way that we operate with a public hearing, which means that we will first ask the applicant to make their presentation, uh, provide a brief opportunity to the planning board to ask any basic explanatory questions, then open the public comment period. Each person who would like to speak has up to three minutes to make a presentation with the possibility of follow-up questions from the planning board, we will then close the public comment period and the planning board will proceed with its deliberations. Just wanted to make that clear because it is somewhat a new procedure to all of us. So the first item on the agenda tonight is the Golden Ridge Subdivision Amendment. Golden Ridge LLC is requesting amendments to the previously approved Golden Ridge subdivision to create another lot located at the end of Golden Ridge Lane. Um, this is pursuant to section 16-2-5 subdivision amendment. Is there someone here to make a presentation for the applicant? Please come forward and introduce yourself. Good evening, my name is uh, Betsy Poulin and I'm from Mitchell and Associates in Portland. And I'm here representing uh, Golden Ridge Lane LLC for this presentation. Uh, it, this is, uh, uh, this is a subdivision which was previously approved by the planning board in 2003. Uh, we have a location and zoning map up here on the on the screen, and right here is the, I've highlighted, outlined the uh, entire subdivision parcel here in red. Uh, and this is a 15.14 acre parcel. And then the actual area where the um, revisions are is a 10.14 uh, acre parcel, which is mostly in the side of, of the subdivision. Uh, the existing zoning is the residence A primarily, 
And then there's uh, a few areas where there are wetlands on the parcel. So there's the, the RP2 zone, which is the wetland protection district and the RP1 critical wetland district. And neither of those areas would be um, impacted by this development. Uh, there's also, as you can see, a great pond is in the vicinity, and there's a great pond watershed overlay um, part of the subdivision, too. Here's a, a 2009 aerial photo of the parcel. Um, you can see great pond a little bit better up in the upper left corner. And um, Route 77 is the, uh, where Golden Ridge Lane um, comes into the subdivision. So this is a copy of the 2003 subdivision plan, which was approved. It uh, was by, developed by K&K &K Realty. And uh, the parcel was subdivided into three lots. So uh, th there's one lot, um, this, this lot here, uh, which was um, purchased by Amy Powell, who's an abutter. And then there's this lot, um, <laughs> try to use the thing. There's another lot um, at the end of Golden Ridge Lane, um, which was purchased by uh, Stephen Leslie Young. And then the remainder of the parcel was purchased by K&K &K Realty, which is the big lot on the right-hand side. Uh, there's a Golden Ridge Lane is a private, uh, private lane and you can see there's a hammerhead kind of turnaround, I guess, at the end right there. Um, the subdivision, as it was approved, um, included upgrades to Golden Ridge Lane, but there were no building permits that were pulled for, for the, as part of the subdivision process because there were, there were no buildings built. So the improvements that were originally approved um, were not put in place. The only things that uh, happened is post-approval where the selling of the lots and reworking of some of the easements. Um, the Greenbelt pathway used to go across some of the lots and now it was shifted into the Golden Ridge Lane uh, right-of-way. Uh, and um, another uh, item to note uh, from this previous plan approval uh, is down here in this portion of the site there was an easement area that was proposed as an open space uh, dedication for the town and um, on further review it was decided that um, the town decided that it wasn't um, something they wanted to accept as an easement because it was mostly wetland and it didn't connect to any other uh, open space so um, this was taken into consideration with our proposal um, for the subdivision plan. There's no uh, open space areas that are dedicated on this plan, but a financial donation would be made to the town's open space fund instead. So, as I mentioned before, this this is it's basically um, all, we're, all we were doing is proposing to add another lot and extend Golden Ridge Lane. So you can see that this, this is one lot here, and then there's another lot here. And then the Golden Ridge Lane, which term formerly terminates here, would be extended out this direction. Uh, we've been working uh, very closely with the abutters of, um, that, of Golden Ridge Lane you know, to um, come up with a design that's favorable for everybody and to um, come up with you know, see if there are any issues that need to be resolved that are part of our construction process. And I guess just, you know, to, to make sure everybody's happy with, with the, how this project will progress. Uh, the, the existing road uh, for Golden Ridge Lane is about 11 to 15 feet wide. It's a gravel road. And uh, what we're proposing is to do the same thing as the 2003 plan, which is an 18 foot wide gravel gravel road with a two foot wide grass shoulders on either side. Um, the entering from Route 77, uh, there's along the western side of the, um, the Golden Ridge Lane right of way there, there's a Greenbelt easement 
along that portion of the property. So the road is in, in this area is not exactly centered in the right of way because we didn't want to encroach into that easement for the pedestrian access. So instead of being, you know, it's it's two feet off from the center of the of the um, right of way line, which is pretty minor considering, you know, that to not impact that easement area for the green belt. Uh, the the roadway improvements are similar to what was proposed in 2003, which is improving the stormwater flow and increasing culvert size. Um, and as I mentioned before, the hammerhead turnaround would be extended now to the end of the, the new extension of the bridge lane. Uh, so up here would be a hammerhead turnaround. Uh, at the sketch plan presentation in February, um, John Mitchell presented this, and we were, um, based on information that we already had for this um, parcel, um, we were under the impression that the, we were going to need a construction easement from the Young's property right here, which um, when we were working with our stormwater engineer, we went out and did some site visits, we realized that the watershed divide line that we had on our plan wasn't accurate. So we redelineated that line and submitted it to Bruce Smith for a review and he approved it. So basically that what that means is we don't need the construction easement for the Youngs and then that we can have this whole portion of the extension um, centered in the, in the right of way. And so um, we're going to minimize, uh, you know, obviously clearing in, in this area, um, keep everything, you know, any clearing in the right of way. And we're proposing some additional uh, plant material on the Young's property. Um, there'll be some evergreen trees, you know, on, in a couple locations here, um, which is something they requested as part of these improvements. Uh, the road improvements will well increase the impervious surface of the site, um, and but. The, improve, the increase is 11,400 square feet, and that falls below the uh, 20,000 square foot threshold of the um, DEP. So no DEP permit will be required. And also, um, none of the resource protection zones will be impacted by the site improvements. And the post-development calculations um, note that there will be no impacts um, due to the increased impervious surface of the site. Uh, for utilities, the, um, there, is, there were some upgrades uh, in Route 77 in 2007 for um, the water service. So there's a 12-inch main um, on, luckily, our side of the road. <laughs> um, so the proposal is to extend an 8-inch service uh, down, down the road here. Oops, I keep hitting the microphone. <laughs> uh, up to this point here where there'd be a fire hydrant proposed. And, and then from that point on, down the remainder of the lane is uh, going to be a four inch main extension. And we've met with the Portland Water District uh, to review these um, improvements. And they have um, approved uh, what we're proposing. Uh, and also, um, they would take over the ownership or maintenance of the water line and hydrant after everything is constructed. And they're going to have an easement on the property for the water service. Um, and for the septic, on the, there's no uh, sewer service out in this area, so there have been uh, test pits dug on, on the lots and um, by Albert Frick Associates, and the HHE 200 forms were submitted as part of our application, and, the, and they've been reviewed and approved um, for adequate um, service on the site. The current uh, Golden Ridge Lane has overhead electric uh, cable and telephone that goes down the length, um, the, the full length of the property, and there's a pole right here on the Young's lot. So it's all overhead service to this point. And we're proposing to not change any of that because it's connected to existing residences that are out there. But from that point, we would run underground service to the new lots um, within the road right of way. Um, so we will be uh, working with CMP, or we are working with CMP, to obtain an easement on the Young's property to 
extend this underground service um, over to the new proposed lots. Uh, for storm drainage, it's, it's uh, just the sheet flow.